three, two, one. Hello Frisco and welcome to this one-off video that we are doing with a nonprofit that is really special and close to our hearts, Treasured Vessels Foundation. What please welcome Alicia Bush. Alicia. Hello. Alicia. Thanks so much for having me again. Ab absolutely. <laughs> yes. So Alicia is with us today because she has a special guest. Today we're going to interview a survivor from Treasured Vessels Foundation. And Alicia, just give us a very quickly background on the work that Treasured Vessels does, and then we will introduce Jane Doe. Um, want to let everyone know just from the get-go that we will be blacking her out, Jane Doe. We will not be actually seeing her, but we think that especially now in these crazy times, um, this topic is very, very important for parents, for kids, for families. And so, Alicia, please tell us what Treasure Vessels does. Yeah, so we started this foundation for years ago plus these last seven months we actually opened our doors to begin serving but four years ago when we started it was basically hey when someone has recovered from a trafficking situation and we read about them on the news where do they go and the answer just wasn't really satisfactory to the ones that were being rescued as they were going to a domestic violence shelter or they were going to a homeless shelter or they were going back to the home that they had p potentially ran away from in the first place and so that was really kind of our idea was, hey, let's fill in this gap in care for these young people that need special services when it's specific to trafficking. So we have created a program that has mental health is the cornerstone of what we do. Um, we have case management and food shelter clothing, all the wraparound services that go in with that. But we also, but the main focus is we focus on safety and So we started Let's see, we opened our doors in January. Uh, we had an amazing uh, fundraising um, plan, if you will. And yeah. then- We all had plans. <laughs> we all had plans, we all had plans. So um, it's been an interesting to, to open our doors and to begin serving. We've served six young ladies. Um, one of our young ladies that's gonna speak today, she just had a baby. And um, so that added to, um, the community in, in our home. And, and it's just been such an amazing journey to actually walk, watch these young people walk out exactly what we had designed for them um, and, and do so well and thrive better than we even ha could have imagined. Right. So we're so thankful um, for the survivors and just leaning in to the thing, to the, resources that we were providing and um, so I, I'm so excited for her to share with you this journey about what we've been talking about for quite some time now. Excellent. Well, I'm going to let you turn your video off so that we okay. can gain privacy and safety. And as she's sitting down, um, we get to look at a fabulous glamour shot of Alicia. <laughs> the rest of this video. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, so Please let me know once Miss Jane is seated and is ready to answer my questions. Yeah. All right, she is ready. All right, Jane, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for being so brave and sharing your story. So I'm gonna start by asking, how long have you been with Treasured Vessels Foundation and what brought you to the organization? Um, well, thank you for having me, and um, uh, I have been with Treasured Vessels for about six months, okay. um, and what got me to Treasured Vessels, um, so uh, I was, I always like to say I was found by an officer, a detective, and um, he he actually just listened to me, listened to what I was saying, and I guess he, you know, understood. And um, he asked me, you know, not to leave his office, and I didn't because I wanted the help. Um, and he had me fill out an application and for Treasured Vessels, and that's, 
I got a call like within a couple of days and immediately pretty much was accepted and they've really helped. Good. So can you take us back to your childhood, Jane, and tell us, you know, a little bit of what it was like growing up for you? Okay. Um, I grew up in a small town. Um, my mom and dad weren't really together. They had separated and, um, my mom, you know, was sick and is still sick. And, um, I didn't have a lot of positive, positive role models. Um, and, um, yes, that's, so do you think that not having those positive role models and the fact that your mother was sick, you, you know, there, that's a lot of stress in your life. Do you think that that um, impacted the way that things kind of snowballed and happened to you? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, not understanding that there is life like a bigger life out outside of the life that I had been, you know, I had been introduced to at a very young age. Um, and uh, not having people, you know. Right, right. So, so I'm hearing that probably two struggles for you were not being seen and not being heard. Do you, would you say that's right? Yes. Okay. And so do you think that um, if you had had other people around you, other adults in your life, do you think that that would have changed the circumstances? Yes. I, I believe it would have changed a lot. <laughs> yeah. So have do so let's switch to where you are now at Treasure Vessels. Do you are you being seen? Are you being heard? Are you having those opportunities to tell your story and and find healing through that? Yes. Um I'm seen I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm all of the above. Listened to um uh, my opinion is valued. I, um, every day I, you know, someone is listening. <laughs> right, right. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So how would, how has your day to day life changed since you've been at the organization? Um, it has oh, there's a little one. <laughs> Um, especially being a new mom, <laughs> right? And just being allowed to be a person and be a woman and be, you know, be who I was created to be. Right. And right. So when you leave treasured vessels and I don't know when that is, and you don't have to say, but when you leave, do you, do you think your, your life will be different? And if so, what are those new life goals that you have for yourself? Um, so I don't I don't necessarily ever just want to leave. I want to, you know, grow and right. um, I want to, I, I know you have to give it away to keep it. Like you have to share and the message and, and, you know, be helpful to other people. And, but some life goals are really, um, to, uh, graduate college, um, continue to be successful and, um, uh, make, you know, the right decisions and those types of things and be a mother and I want to continue to learn and yes yeah so what would you say to people who might have misconceptions about women in abusive relationships and then I have some thoughts on that after I hear yours. Okay. Um, so probably I would, by the time that 
a, a person has gotten to that point where they're constantly being, you know, controlled and, and abused, they don't really probably know any better at that point because, I mean, of course, we don't think, you know, that it, 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 I know from my situation, it wasn't as bad as it was at the very beginning. Like it got worse over time. And so also I would just like to say that um, if, um, if, you, if you see something, say something, because it's better to be wrong than to not say something and to have been right. You are so correct. I think, you know, to, to answer my own question and reiterate and put 500 underlines under what you've said, I think people misunderstand women in abused, abusive relationships because they always ask the question, well, why doesn't she just leave? She's a grown adult. She can get in her car and drive away. And most people don't understand that it's not like you had this fantastic relationship with someone and all of a sudden he just comes out and decks you. I mean, that never, ever happens. It's exactly what you just said, that it's a slow continuum of dripping on and it's a slow process to where you just get used to um, being ignored or being made fun of, and then that turns into something a little bit rougher. I mean, it, it's a slow, would you say that that's true, Jane, that it's just this slow progression? Um, yes, and I agree with the 500 lines underneath. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it, it's, it's definitely a slow process, and then, and if they're, most of the time when they're, how good they are with manipulation they yes. um they to the your people that are around you they have manipulated them yes i i 100 agree with that also i think so what i want our audience to hear is that those of us who are southern know the saying of how how do you boil a frog well you boil a frog by putting him in a nice warm you know, just warm water and he thinks he's in a bathtub and then you just slowly, slowly, slowly turn up the heat and the frog will never jump out because the frog just slowly gets used to that little bit hotter, that little bit hotter, that little bit hotter until the frog is dead. And I want to say that abusive relationships follow that same path. Um, so would you what would you say jane if you knew of someone who was in a, a relationship or in a situation similar to what you were in um i would definitely say don't be judgmental like maybe they're acting weird what you would think is weird maybe that's how they have created this fantasy world and to try to get help like maybe if i'm acting this way someone will recognize and see that that they can maybe they'll help and right i would just definitely be their friend you know listen yeah i love that yeah listening and let, letting them know that they're believed yes yeah so what do you hope that this interview does for our audience and people watching and listening to um to be aware and to be aware is to be alive and to um that that it's not something that isn't happening right here like it is happening right right it yes it's happening right here in your neighborhood across the street etc yes you're right. Well, Jane, we appreciate you so much for being brave and coming on. And Alicia, I'm going to allow you to come back on here in front of the camera so that we can, um, you know, let our audience know how we can support other women and girls like Jane, um, you know, through this process and how we can support you as an organization. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just I'm always so shocked as each resident comes in and they share the story of, I didn't know what was happening to me was trafficking, A, 
and I, and I didn't know that anybody would even care if, if, if it was because I somehow b uh, blame myself for the choices that I made um, in dating this person or being in the life or exposing myself to this or that. Um, and three, I had no idea that there was an organization or many organizations out there that would want to help. Right. So, I mean, there was just this, uh, it was just so fascinating to, and again, we're not in another country bringing someone here. I mean, this is, these are pe young people that are living right here among us and, and they don't know and we don't know. Right. So we have to open up our eyes. And um, I think for us, we, what was your question? The Sorry. best way that we can help treasure vessels so give us your url you know and do you need donations is it funds like what do you need right now you know most of our residents have taken advantage of medicaid and um, food pantries and other organizations resources we're all kind of sharing among each other but with us we have a licensed professional counselor on staff full-time and we have um uh, we have rent and we have a lot of the other expenses that really can't be covered by another nonprofit, wow. right? So it, it's, it's, it is truly this fundraising aspect of trying to keep our doors open. We are, uh, we have about six weeks in operating funds left. And if we have to close our doors, we leave um, mom, baby, and our other residents, they're homeless at that point. They came to us homeless and now they will, they will go back to being it and so that is our that is our hope is that treasurevesselsfoundation.org you can push um you can donate there you become a monthly donor um we're going to try to have some online events but but really it is truly keeping the doors open 24 hours a day seven days a week wraparound services it's expensive it is i know i'm sure i mean i can't imagine um, so are you looking for board members right now, volunteers in any way, if someone wanted, if someone from the outside, someone from the community, if we wanted to volunteer and give time, can we, what does that look like? Tell us that. So yes, we're expanding our board. We have six now, we're expanding to 11. Um, and so we have volunteer opportunities. Our volunteers are uh, trained for about five hours with our licensed professional counselor just to understand trauma. Um, and sometimes the, the ways that are the behaviors and, and the ways our residents respond may seem different than what we're used to in our day-to-day -day life, but really understanding that, um, there's so much value in that training. We do background checks. And we do have volunteers that come in and teach yoga or do crafts, um, just different variety of things uh, to kind of change some things up for the residents as it does get a little, as we all know, can get a little uh, mundane as we go through the day and, and not be able to go out. And um, some of our residents don't feel very comfortable going out. So there is a volunteer opportunity. It is a, um, kind of a process though, um, to keep our residents safe. Um, but um, yes, and board members, and we have an advisory council as well. Um, we do have a, an event coming up where um, one of the senators is, has said, you know, I'm really passionate about this cause and I wanna do whatever I can to help, to just bring awareness to, to the issue. Um, Cause we know that there, there are many, there are many small businesses that we've worked with that have been supporting TBF along the way that, have, that are struggling financially. But there's all, also parts of the economy that are thriving and booming and, and doing well. So especially to get in front of those people to say, hey, we do have a cause, we are doing something, we are local, and the women that we're serving are truly thriving um, in this program and will be leaders in the community. They're just not gonna be, oh, thanks so much for that, you know, uh, but they, they have really great aspirations. That's wonderful. Alicia, thank you so much for joining us today and being on and allowing us, Lifestyle Frisco, to help share your story. Jane, she's off camera, but Jane, thank you so much for your honesty, your bravery, and uh, we will be sharing in the show notes below in the post um, all the information of how you, our audience, can help support, get involved if you so wish. And Alicia, thank you again. We love you guys so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.